Hello everyone, uh, my name is Felipe Rodriguez and um, for this video I'm going to be talking about chapter 31, Mixing Languages and Dialects and um, I'm also going to be showing you this PowerPoint. So to begin I want to go over some of the main points of the chapter. Um, Lunsford is showing us how um, languages and dialects um, are going to make their way into writing and how you need to be conscious of the way it operates, um, not just in writing, but also linguistically. And um, they mention uh, technical terms like code switching and code meshing, which um, are ways in which languages and dialects interact. And she also talks about how those languages um, interact with audiences. And so one of the first things that she mentions is how you connect with different audiences who might speak in different languages or dialects. And she uses different examples, um, such as uh, a Kenyan rapper or uh, another work of, uh, of uh, writing by a uh, Mexican-American writer. And uh, she also touches on providing translation, the different ways in which that can be done. Uh, as you can see there in the example that I sort of did, uh, one of the ways is to provide a direct translation after writing a, a word in a, a certain language. Um, and you can incorporate that into a, paragraphs, etc. or if you're, and she also includes an example of the, the pamphlet, right, um, for the conference. Um, she also writes that to illustrate, you can illustrate a point, but which we'll see in a bit, um, in a few slides from now. Um, you can illustrate the point by showing how a reader might feel um, encountering your language or dialect as they read and so mixing it into whatever piece that you're writing or, or even how you speak um, needs to register with an audience, but also in a way that can help you, right? Make your point. Um, she also uses the example of that professor, um, Liscott, I believe is her name, Hamila Liscott, who, um, who has a uh, performance or, or spoken word essay rather um, called Broken English where she mixes you know, her, her dialects. Um, I believe you guys were supposed to watch that video. And you can also draw attention to your language uh, or dialect by directly implementing it into the, like the language without translation. And then as you go throughout the work, translating it for the reader. Um, she also touches on quoting directly and respectfully um, when conducting interviews or field work. Uh, it is very important to be mindful and um, you know not document things in a way that might seem um, mocking or that might be interpreted uh, in an incorrect or misleading way. And um, the final point that Lunsford touches on is um, um, evoking people, places, or communities by talking um, specifically to an audience um, within a certain context and being clear on what your purpose is when writing with these, with these uh, languages and dialects in mind. So um, I uh, created a small activity. Uh, for you guys um, that I want you to, to think about, which is um, these, these, um, these um, examples I'm going to show you are going to sort of build up to the final activity, which you guys will do on your own. So first, I want you to take a look at this passage. And the reason I'm including it is to sort of show the difference between language and dialect. And so the following slides are going to be showing you that the three different languages essentially. And so you're probably thinking, what is that? But I'm using a classic example, which is just Beowulf, 
which is in Old English. So here you here you have the passage, and here you have the English translation of it, which um, is one way to um, incorporate into your writing a translation, a side by side. Um, this part is uh, where the monster Grendel has to go. Um, well, not really lick their wounds because they die, but uh, they've just had their arm ripped off by by Beowulf, right? The hero of the story. And um, you can see that the some of the words you might be able to sort of make a connection. Um, well, for for example, this one. Um, but others not not so much. You need you need the assistance of the translation. But the point of this one is that when you first see the language without really knowing, it's sort of um, I don't want to say it takes you by surprise, but it it puts you in that position of how other people. Uh, sort of um, interacting or, or reading English might first feel, um, right? And so the second example is also a different example of how you can um, write, um, illustrate the point, right? Um, here you have um, Chaucer's uh, one of the tales from Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, which is in Middle English, and so you can see that line after line you have the Middle English, the original Middle English, and then a translation of it right under it, kind of how I showed um, in the other slide right here, right, providing a translation directly after, which is also the point that Lunsford makes. And um, again, this is another way that you can directly see the language as you read, so that you can understand. And the final example is uh, Shakespeare. Um, here you have an excerpt, which is in modern English. So um, many feel that this is not something they can read or understand so easily, but it's um, it's no different than the the English that is spoken now. Um, they're very maybe there's a few words that aren't used quite as much but it doesn't mean that it's not it's totally understand uh incomprehensible so for your for the last part of this um video i'm going to quickly read this poem to you and it's going to constitute the larger part of your activity um so this is ozymandias by percy Bysshe shelley and it's uh Poem published in 1818, and um, we'll discuss it after. So it goes, I met a traveler from an antique land who said, two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them, on the sand, half sunk, a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command Tell that its sculptor, well those passions read, which yet survive, stamped on these lifeless things, the hand that mocked them, and the heart that fed, and on the pedestal these words appeared. My name is Ozymandias, king of kings, look on my works, ye mighty and despair. Nothing beside remains, round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the lone and level sand stretch far away. So, um, for your activity, you are to explain to a classmate in whichever dialect you know or prefer what this poem is about, what you understood from it, what your takeaway from it is. Um, now, I'm not looking for an analysis, just plain and simple uh, what, what the author is saying, and um, you can use your school dialect, so to speak. Um, how you would normally discuss it in a classroom setting, sorry, um, or how you would tell it, you know, to your family at home or uh, talking about it with some friends. And um, maybe you could even do what uh, Professor Lisco did and use a combination of the three. It's really up to you. But um, go ahead and read it. Take five, take five minutes to discuss. And... Um, That'll be it. So thank you for watching and listening to my video. And um, I wish you well.